We got Silent Night. We got Titans. And we have Duke. Number one. Find out if these comics will make good movies and television shows right now. <laughs> Welcome back to episode 48 of the series, Will These Comics Make Good Movies and Television Shows? I am your host, Frank Zanka. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, as well as a working line producer, or not so working recently because of the strikes. So hoping to have a really good 2024. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm here to talk comics with you guys, as well as film and games and a whole bunch of other stuff that... Uh, I do on the channel. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're here for the first time, welcome. And also remember to subscribe if you can. If you like the video at the end, give me the thumbs up or give me the middle finger, whatever you like. <laughs> All right, so here we're talking about three comics today. Uh, two of them are DC and one being from Skybound slash Image. So this is, uh, let's jump right into Silent Knight. Uh, this is the ending of the Batman Santa Claus series, which you think would be really silly, uh, but it, uh, it was fun. Uh, I almost didn't pick it up, but everybody else said that it was fun, so I decided to pick it up on my own. And uh, yeah, so we had Krampus, uh, who I guess had a falling out with Santa because Santa believed that he was actually killing children when he really wasn't. He just wanted to scare them, but he ended up being banished to a void. And then when Santa realized he had made a mistake, he went into the void to find Krampus, but Krampus had uh, disappeared somewhere that he couldn't find him. So after being trapped in there for a certain amount of time, Krampus came out of what Superman kind of called like a phantom zone type of thing, and he had brought some spirits with him of which possessed uh, Superman, and he broke out a few of the monsters that uh, Santa Claus had in, you know, uh, imprisoned over his years of being a badass. <laughs> I don't know. That, see, if you ever wondered what Santa Claus was doing when he wasn't delivering presents or overseeing the elves, this is what he was doing. He was imprisoning monsters. <laughs> so that's basically the storyline. And now this issue picks up with uh, Superman uh, being possessed and then having to battle all these monsters along with Superman looking very psychotic. <laughs> So we have pretty much all the Justice League. It was great to see Miss Martian. I haven't seen her in forever. And Krampus thought Damien was a bad boy. And he, well, he is. And so he imprisoned him. Uh, meanwhile, he's having a little altercation with the demon that's inside him. And his good nature, where he's just supposed to scare children, uh, is coming out. Meanwhile, the whatever this demonic uh, possession of his is saying, no, 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 you have to kill him. And, uh, and Damien's having a, a big problem with that. Uh, so meanwhile, we cut to the big fight scene with Santa kicking ass and saving everybody's butts or whatever. Uh, you know, if we try to take Superman down and Blue Beetle is there, really, of all, of all the people, we're going to rely on Blue Beetle to take Superman out. But I guess he can now create kryptonite. I don't know. You guys tell me. Is that how that works? Are we is he creating kryptonite with his blasts now? I don't know. It all just seems kind of weird. So the entity or whatever else leaves uh, Superman, uh, and I think we switch back over. Oh, there's an that's right. There's an avalanche. Uh, covering a lot of the monsters. I guess Babs is just trying to get out of there at the last second. Uh, which is right there. Uh, Batman's expression is pretty funny. Uh, I am missing Michelle Bandolini or whatever her name is. Uh, her art was far superior to this, but I understand what happens. This was a weekly book. So uh, I guess it was tough for her to be able to keep up with uh, with 
with the art over that period of time. So Damien realizes that he's having a problem with the entity in him, uh, meaning Krampus, and now decides to play it up. It's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, I didn't try it. Uh, and Krampus is like, see, see, he's sorry. <laughs> okay, man. And this is probably one of the worst pictures of Wonder Woman I've ever seen. So they're they're picking up uh, people out of the snow from the avalanche, although it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> um, and so I guess Superman relays some things to them that you know from the entity that was in him, and. Uh, you know, everybody's like, well, Damien can take care of himself kind of thing. And they end up portaling over to fight Krampus and whatever is going on inside of him. Uh, and, you know, Batman does a flying kick and all this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to probably pick that up. Take a look at that. Neo before Zod. I don't really like the artwork, but uh, it looks kind of odd. But I'm going to pick it up and see. Um and I guess after I just complained about Aquaman not being in the Godzilla thing, I guess they're going to put him in there. And I really wish they would stop using the mirror costume from the stupid Snyderverse thing. That costume sucks. Go back to the pure green one. So anyway, we got this other big battle scene going on. And as you can tell, I don't like this one as much as I did the other one. Uh, but anyway, Damien, <laughs> this is where it gets funny. Uh, Damien's like, I don't really care about all this Christmas stuff. And Santa's like, really? I was going to ask you to come with me. Oh, really? Then I don't care that much. Maybe a little bit more than I did before. <laughs> and Krampus and uh, Santa Claus make up. And he's like, you got to ask your dad. But I'll take you on my sleigh tonight if you want. And Batman's like, go have fun. So I thought that was all pretty cool. That's very different. Uh, and then we get this sit-down dinner thing. Everybody's divided up at the tables and having this big Christmas feast. I like how <laughs> it's basically the kids' table and the adults' table on the other side. <laughs> uh, although why Aquaman and, and Green Arrow are relegated to one table and the Green Arrow Lanterns are another, but the, the big three are at the, the adult table. <laughs> And that's the end of that. So uh, to me, it was kind of a letdown. I expected something a little bit more than what I got for the ending. Uh, and I was all worried about how they were going to wrap it up so quickly. And here's how. They just tied it in a bow and said, here you go. Uh, and that was it. So uh, kind of a letdown. I kind of wanted a little bit more after the big setup. Um, but, you know, what can you do in four issues, I guess. Um, could it made it into a movie? I think the whole ending needs to be rewritten, but I, again, I would love to see a Santa Claus, uh, you know, a holiday themed Justice League movie. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. You'd have to limit the amount of characters. You have to like limit to like five characters. Um, but yeah, it would be fun, but I don't think they'll ever do it, but it would be fun. All right. So let's move on to Titans. So this is a two things combined into one. So there's a thing called Beast World going on right now, which I think is incredibly stupid. And Beast Boy turns himself into Starro, even though Beast Boy is supposed to be turning himself into animals, and Starro is not one. He's an alien. Uh, and when he does, pieces of him fall to Earth, and then people eat pieces of him and become beasts. Yes, it's that gross and that stupid. And so I'm not collecting any of Beast World, but this... I'm collecting Titan, so it kind of falls into that. And so we have that, plus we have the Brother Eternity thing that's going on in Titans, and the two are interwoven, kind of. It's like two stories, like, stuck in one book, unfortunately. Uh, I think, I I don't know, I'm not looking forward to the next issue. But, so they're having the, the so Garth, who is Aqualad, or was originally Aqualad, is being possessed by or turn into a monster to a certain extent his brain is taken over for sure but he has like monster tendencies where his mouth only opens and then he when he puts whatever is possessing him into somebody else's mouth and that possesses them 
So it's kind of gross, but uh, we're getting into the gross territory here on two parts. Everybody eating pieces of other people. <laughs> uh, but we don't really know who Brother Eternity is, but he has this whole church, you know, church of blood or whatever it is. And, you know, he's kind of a cult leader. But we start out with this kind of a cool opening. I really kind of like it because we don't have to, have to see Tamaranian uh, too often. But this is a young Starfire, uh, Coriander, and her sister Commander, uh, which is with a K, but with an apostrophe. Um, but this is by uh, by Tom Taylor, who's also devising the whole Beast World thing. And she goes, oh, look, Mommy, look how pretty. And she's like, what is it? I'm like, it's just the whole world. And she's like, yeah, I can't, you know, because you know, her mother's the queen. And I kind of forget that sometimes it is. And then there's a whole takeover of the of the city and uh, the whatever this guard guy is, which really that's really the whole reason for that opening is to introduce you to the guard guy, uh, whatever the bodyguard is. But anyway, she gets enslaved. And uh, I really don't know the full story of uh, Fire, uh, Starfire, but I... I I assume that's what. So is Tamarian still a dictatorship of another alien race? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, she escapes, and this is a. I'm going to put it up there also. This is a beautiful picture of, of Starfire, though. I mean, that's really good art there. So anyway, that's when she uh, escapes. I guess she finds her power and whatever else as she gets older, um, and then we have this, you know, stupid thing, of. Uh, Black Adam being uh, a lion. Whatever. And then we have Dick and Babs kind of trying to make sense of this whole thing. And, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Batman is now a wolf man also. Yeah, it's all this. But then we go back to the other storyline with Garth, uh, who is now attacking... Uh, the Titans Tower as well. Uh, so I'm kind of skipping over the, the whole thing with Beast World because I just don't care. But we'll hear what I was trying to say about uh, Garth having that weird mouth thing. Yeah, so he looks like, I guess, the vampires out of Blade. I think Blade 2 or whatever. That's what he looks like to me. And I guess they're protecting some kids. And it's funny that the kids are the kids are watching Teen Titans go. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> but they're all doing different things, and they need help, and they can't come. But then Raven says, I'll be there to help you guys. Uh, you know, and we have Captain Marvel and Miss and Mary Marvel uh, going to be attacking Black Adam, Lion Man. And then we're, we got a whole bunch of bears. That's like the three bears. And you can see that. You can see the wolf bat. It's the symbol on the Batman thing. But there's Brother Eternity there. Okay, so here's where... Uh, so, he, of course, Garth is stronger underwater. So he is purposely brings the water inside so that he'll be stronger uh, to fight them. And I'd be, I think I'd be pretty scared, too. So he comes in, and I guess there's a piece of uh, Gar that you know, priest boy that he then eats and he turns into something. But again, I could care less because I'm not, I'm not collecting any of that here. But again, we're back into the, the storyline and Starfire. That's a really good face. I mean, the art, look at that face of Starfire right there. But anyway, she confronts him. And when she battles him, she takes off whatever glamours on him or whatever. And it's revealed that it's the guard. He didn't even change his clothes from when he was a, when she was a child. <laughs> She's in the same costume. But I thought that was uh, I thought that was neat that the guy is Tamaranian. Uh, I don't know how that's going to connect, but uh, but that's it. So it's unfortunate that the um, that the issue is interwoven with Beast World because I could care less. I would have rather seen more of the stuff about. Um, Brother Eternity and find out what's going on there um, and with Garth because now we don't even get the battle with Garth it just kind of ends there 
So uh, yeah, I uh, I like what I like half the book. I don't care about the Beast World thing at all. Um, I I care. I like the rest of it, and uh, it'll be yeah, like we have a, a Titans TV show, but it kind of sucks. So there's so much you can do with Titans. The team is really good, and uh, it's just unfortunate we're not getting uh, a books that do well with it. So I like what's going on here so far. With there's plenty of other stories that we could do with a Titans movie and that would be really good, especially with Deathstroke and stuff like that. All right, so let's jump into Duke. Okay, so this is Duke is a G.I. Joe character. He's one of the main G.I. Joe characters. And as you know from my previous things rating G.I. Joe books, that I absolutely hate the Larry Hama uh, books that are going on right now. I, I completely loathe them. I stopped uh, collecting it already at issue two. And this is by Joshua Williamson. This, this is part of the Energon universe, which I guess the original, the G.I. Joe stuff that I was reading is not. And uh, so this is like the combination of Void Rivals, G.I. Joe, and uh, Transformers. So they're interconnecting all of these. And so Duke in here, uh, I, I can tell you right off the bat, I like this a lot better. Uh, a lot better than the Larry Hama stuff. But the artwork, I don't like. I mean, it's as far as I'm concerned, that's lazy art. And I say that because there's no real inking in there. There is no real combination of anything. Uh, there's no uh, detail. And you can see straight from here about how non-detailed it is. I mean, the face and everything else is really no shading to anything. It's just as far as that's why I call it just lazy art. Uh, that's how I feel about it. And, but... Like, actually, this picture is pretty good. Uh, that's Hawk. So Hawk is his superior officer. And so the storyline here is that Duke was up in a plane on a mission, and suddenly he and his team were attacked by a Transformer, a Decepticon. Uh, I'm not sure what character that is, if it's Starscream or whatever. So he ends up living through it when his whole team is killed. Like here, the ejector seat goes off, and then which is why I feel it's it's Starscream because Starscream ends up uh, just squishing the guy that's in the ejector seat. And Duke even says that the guy that the monster or whatever the robot enjoyed it, uh, killing everybody. So Hawk is like, "Look, Duke." You need to stop with this. You know, you must have seen something different. You know, we've already put you through psych eval. We want you to come back. And Duke's like, no, I have to hunt this thing down. Whatever this thing is, I got to kill it because it killed my team. And Duke's and Hawk's like, you know, you're, you're okay. You, I was wrong. You're not coming back. Get the hell out of here. You're on leave. And that's what happens. So that, I mean, that, that's a pretty good setup, man. I kind of like that. Uh, so he's trying to hunt down a Decepticon? <laughs> I don't know how it's going to work out. So anyway, then we jump to six months later. Again, we get this, you know, look at the Starfire face in the other one. And then look at these faces here. I mean, awful. I don't know, man. I don't know what you have this big IP and you got really bad art on it. Ouch. So anyway, he part, he's part of a support group of people that have seen aliens and stuff like that. So he ends up with this uh, the head of it who is like, look, my uh, I, I found these you know these plans that I have and I think they're going to weaponize them and all this stuff. And uh, I need you to go uh, kind of sneak into the company and see if that's actually correct to see if they are weaponizing this stuff. And he's like, nah, that's a normal Tuesday for me, not a problem. So, I don't know if this comes from anything, Mars, Lab Industries, or whatever. Couldn't they have called it anything else besides Mars? Because I keep thinking Mars Bars. You know, Mars is already a corporation. <laughs> so, is he breaking into a chocolate factory? But is he Willy Wonka there? I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I really wish they had picked a different name. So, anyway, he goes into this... Uh, 
he finds his way in, he goes through an elevator shaft, all this stuff, and he ends up in like the lower basement area and he finds a cobra hanger. <laughs> look at look at all those old toys as far as I'm concerned. We got a his tank. Uh, I forgot what the little helicopters were called. Uh, the armor bodies and all this stuff. And I thought like, oh my God, this is so cool. This is all the old toys from the old 80s, uh, the early 80s. It's good stuff. But anyway, I guess he wasn't sneaky enough. So he gets caught by this guy and we get a nice little fight scene in there. Uh, but it doesn't really work out because he gets nabbed by a whole bunch of Cobras, but he doesn't know it's Cobra yet. So this is like the beginning portion, which is kind of a reboot, which I like. Uh, and we're getting kind of a different kind of take on, uh, you know, G.I. Joe at this point. Uh, he almost, guy almost looks like Colossus there, doesn't he? This Colossus is not in this book for sure. <laughs> So anyway, they're talking to him, what should we want to do with this guy, blah, blah, blah. He says, we really don't want to kill him. And look who it is, it's Destro. And Destro is heading up all the stuff, which makes sense because uh, he was like the weapons guy for Cobra. He was the one that made all the weapons deals and everything like that and did some construction uh, and you know headed up that whole division. So... Uh, he ends up going back. They let him go, but he goes back to find his the whole his own group uh, killed. And the woman that he was talking with that sent them over there uh, is about dying. And she's like, no, no, listen to me. Uh, here's the only thing they didn't take. And then I guess they decided, were they going to kill him anyway? I don't know. I, I don't know what this team is. But they all fire at him. And he barely escapes. He escapes with, like, a, a scratch, basically. a bullet. He gets a bullet wound. There's a bullet that did graze him. At least we have that, where it's just that he didn't get, you know, without a, without a scratch type of situation. And then we have Duke over here discussing the stuff that's going on with this other woman here. And I don't know who that is, whether it's Lady J or whatever. But they realize that they have to... Uh, so I guess he's getting blamed that they... they that might be a security team that came in and sit all the dead bodies and get I guess Duke might be getting blamed for that, which might be set up by Cobra, which that's pretty, pretty smart. I don't want to kill him, but maybe I can blame all the deaths on him. That's pretty smart. So they send in, and I can't tell everybody the same thing every time I do these things, Stalker and Rock and Roll to go get him. And I say the same thing every time. Like Stalker was my first G.I. Joe figure. I love the beret on him. Uh, I always thought he was a cool character. But he was the first G.I. Joe toy that I had ever purchased back in the 80s. So, yeah, there's that. And then they have a, a thing for the new Cobra Commander uh, short story or, you know, short run that's coming up. Um, but, yeah, I, I went into this going, I don't know if I want to get it because the, uh, the original G.I. Joe was so bad. Uh, but I love this. I think this is great. Uh, this actually feels more like G.I. Joe or a beginning of it. And uh, so, yeah, I'm waiting to see what happens. Duke is on the run from other Joes that they're sending after him. That's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. So let's do a recap. So, uh, yeah, so far, if we could do it whole... Well, they set up G.I. Joe in the last Beast, uh, Rise of the Beasts movie. So this would be kind of cool if they went back and did something like this. Um, you know, Skybound is the ones that do Walking Dead. And uh, that would, you know, they have a certain amount of control and stuff like that for Walking Dead. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Titans, I'm waiting to see what happens, but I like I like the whole Tamaranian setup now. I wish the Beast World stuff was not in that, but I would definitely like to see more Titans uh, in t TV and movies. And Silent Night uh, was good, but I thought that the wrap-up was too quick, and I was kind of disappointed with it. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, remember, give me the thumbs up, uh, the like button, or give me a middle finger, whatever you want. And, you know, leave a comment about what you're collecting, or if you're collecting any of these, or if you like any of these, and maybe collect them in the future. 
uh, or whatever. Uh, plus, remember that we're going to be doing a late pledge for some of my books, uh, which is Lords of Ballet. And uh, we're also working on the card game. I got the new uh, graphic design in for the cards. So I'm putting that up together now. I'm putting together the Kickstarter right after I finish doing all the cards. Uh, I am doing an Oz uh, expansion right now. I have to play test those. Uh, I'll probably go out and play test again tomorrow. I try to play test at least a dozen to 20 times before I kind of close the book on some kind of a design. All right. And uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you so much again. And I'll see you guys, well, probably next year. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.